Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our presentation on MPC Research Project 639, Automated Image-Based Aircraft Trafficking. Today's presentation is brought to you by the Transportation Learning Network. TLN is a program of the Upper Great Plains Transportation Institute at North Dakota State University and is a partnership with the four state DOTs of North Dakota, South Dakota, Montana, and Wyoming, and the Mountain Plains Consortium, Consortium, which includes eight universities in Colorado, North Dakota, South Dakota, Utah, and Wyoming. Our speakers today are Mohammed Farhad Manish. He is a PhD student at the University of Utah, Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. His research focuses on applying image and video processing, computer vision, and machine learning techniques to model civil infrastructure systems, such as airports, roadways, et cetera, for traffic monitoring and asset management purposes. Joining him today is Nikola Markovic. He's received his PhD degree in transportation engineering from the University of Maryland in 2013. Currently, he is an assistant professor of civil and environmental engineering at the University of Utah. His research uses operations research and data science to improve the efficiency of transportation systems. His current research is supported by two National Science Foundation grants. He was a recipient of the 2015 Glover Klingman Prize. With that, Mohammed, I'll go ahead and mute myself and let you take over. Thank you, Julius, for the introduction. I just would like to ask if everyone can hear me well and can see this slide. Okay, that's great. Yes, looks good. With that, with, without further ado, let me go ahead and start the presentation. Okay, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and start the presentation for the project titled Automated Image-Based, uh, let me move this, Automated Image-Based Aircraft Tracking at Non-Towered Air Force. Uh, before, before discussing on how I built an intelligent camera system uh, using machine learning for aircraft uh, operation count, detection, and identification, uh, I will explain why we are interested in these operational data and uh, why a camera system benefits us compared to the existing systems. So the content of the presentation would be like this. I will briefly go through the major elements of our project, starting with the importance of this work, and then uh, we'll review the existing methods and their shortcomings, and then discuss how I use computer vision to count and recognize uh, the aircraft operations at non-tower Davis. And uh, I will also present the details of the system performance, which is tested with, uh, in several uh, case studies at five uh, general aviation airports in the state of Utah. After that, I will discuss the implementation of the system and the presentation uh, will be concluded with a brief description on the future research line. Okay, let's start with the importance of the project. Airport operation volume measurements are important for many reasons. Uh, in fact, any funding request for a capital improvement project needs to be justified by uh, providing reliable information about the airport's operations counts. Uh, these data are used as a basis for assessing airport capacity needs, determining staffing requirements, and allocating uh, budgets for airport development projects and uh, airport master plans. Uh, the operations counts are also crucial to environmental studies advising airport uh, development projects. Also, uh, flight safety could be compromised if FAA, Federal Aviation uh, Administration, uh, use underestimated operations counts for infrastructure planning, such as uh, control tower justification. Additionally, Identification of the individual operations, I mean individual aircraft operations, uh, can potentially increase the security and safety level of the uh, airports. Uh, by detecting uh, unauthorized uh, landings when airport is closed or if an aircraft is involved in an incursion. Typically, uh, airports use control towers to document their domestic operation information. 
However, the catch-22 here is that more than 97% uh, of the United States airports are not equipped with control towers. Also, some towered airports cannot operate 24-7, and in some cases during the day or night uh, have no active tower. That said, many attempts have been made uh, to automatically detect and count aircraft operations using several approaches. <clears throat> Among those approaches, uh, three methods stand out for their common use between the airport practitioners and research community in this area. Acoustical counting methods, ADSP-based, and radio key countings. Let's see what shortcomings uh, each one of these methods has uh, that's motivated us for developing a camera-based system. We start with the acoustical counters. Automated acoustical counters, or AACs, recognize an aircraft operation uh, by detecting the sound of uh, aircraft engine, which is associated with its takeoff. As a result, they cannot detect landing operations. I have a video uh, to show you what's the difference between the uh, takeoff operation and the landing operation and the sound of the aircraft engine. This is the takeoff operation. You would hear this aircraft engine sound pretty clear. And this is an aircraft, a landing operation, the same aircraft model. Uh, there are some shortcomings with this system. They would most likely undercount the quieter aircraft operations, and they cannot count the landing operations, as I showed you. And deployment of the AAC microphones and microprocessors require careful consideration, uh, as this system is vulnerable uh, to both overcounting and undercounting. For example, an acoustical counter might confuse a taxiing aircraft with a takeoff operation at airports with closely arranged uh, taxiway and runways. And also, it is impossible to identify uh, uh, the identity of an aircraft based on its sounds. By identity, I mean like the information regarding the aircraft owner aircraft model and all those detailed information. ADSP uh, is another technology for counting operations. In this system, an aircraft operation uh, is based and counted on based on the aircraft uh, spatiotemporal proximity to the runway which we estimate this special temporal proximity by encoding mode S uh, or mode C signals of the aircraft transponder, which are either automatically transmitted in a periodic fashion or interrogated by secondary radar uh, systems. The problem with this system is the current low equipage rate of the general aviation fleet with the required transponders. This technology uh, cannot deliver accurate counts because of that. Additionally, uh, most of the current uh, transponders, most of the aircraft that has these transponders cannot support uh, specifically mode S signals and only support mode C signals, which needs an interrogator to transmit the signal. And these signals also do not have the aircraft information, also called hex ID, aircraft hex ID. So basically, this technology uh, uh, has this shortage of uh, identifying almost most of the general aviation aircraft operations. And uh, the final note here is that most of the non-towered airports, uh, these general aviation non-towered airports, are typically not inside the air space where ADSP-enabled avionics are required by FAA. And finally, uh, the radio click counting method. 
or also known as uh, General Audio Recording Device or GART. Uh, this system records pilots' radio messages while approaching the airport aerodrome, and it is used to estimate the airport operations counts based on the average number of radio messages transmitted on a unicom frequency during aircraft landing or takeoff. Uh, the problem with this system is that the number of radio transmissions that happens between the uh, pilots and the radio center uh, depends on the pilot's situation and location and may change significantly. That's why using uh, them uh, may lead to inaccurate estimates of the annual airport operations. It should be also noted that the airports, uh, that airports that have uh, sh shared unicom frequency are also prone to much more inaccurate RCC-based operation measurements. You can see like in this map, a few of these airports have shared unicom frequency. And the last note here is that this system cannot identify, similar to the other two systems, cannot identify the identity of the individual aircraft operations effectively. To overcome uh, these uh, discussed challenges, I developed a vision-based system to count and identify the aircraft operations automatically. Vision-based systems do not require the operation of the aircraft pilots and are not relied on uh, radar uh, or radio. And this approach is not sensitive to aircraft models like its engine sense, uh, uh, is the sound of the engine as we discussed uh, for the automated acoustical counters. And computer vision actually proved effective for automating many tasks in the aviation system. Okay, that said, to design a system which, is con which should be conducive to different airport layouts, uh, two major tasks are discussed here in this presentation. The possible layouts uh, for the placement of the cameras in the uh, airport field and the necessary algorithms to empower the camera footage uh, with the machine vision that eventually can detect and uh, count and recognize the aircraft operations. Uh, we should know that the output of this system would be uh, the list of the domestic aircraft operations at the associated airport that uses the camera-based system. Let's start with the camera layouts. Regarding the camera deployment, during several meetings that I had with airport engineers and experts, I have discussed this matter and uh, with them and uh, conducted quite a few uh, data collections with the presence of the airport managers. With considerations regarding the RSA and TSA limitations, as you can see on, uh, on the screen, I highlighted, uh, highlighted uh, these two regions with yellow, uh, which are runway safety area and taxiway safety area. Uh, considering these two uh, safety areas, I have found two camera layouts suitable for detecting aircraft operations. The first camera layout is blue color coded, and the second one here is red color coded. Um, the 2D view of the uh, view of the camera layouts can be seen on the bottom of the uh, screen, uh, which also show how the cameras are placed on an airport diagram for each uh, runway. Here we have uh, the field of view of these cameras. Let me play this and just means the video so I can explain. Uh, in the first camera layout, as you can see here, one camera is positioned 
at each end of the airport orienting toward the runway end to capture both landing and departure operations. Uh, this camera layout is originally designed for having an optimum number of cameras at airports and our data has shown that it works well since uh, aircraft pilots usually run from the end of the runway, by end of the runway I mean here, uh, and entrance taxiway, to add a safety margin uh, for, the, for a stop on runway in case of an engine failure or rejected takeoff. In the second layout, which is highlighted with a red color, In this layout, cameras are deployed adjacent and oriented toward our uh, taxiway runway connectors or entrance taxiways. Uh, this layout helps us to have a closer range of view, as you can see, of the operating aircraft, uh, which is critical to, uh, which is critical for accurate uh, aircraft identification, specifically through their tail number printed on their fuse page. These two layouts can work both jointly and individually, which we'll discuss later. Uh, so we have the camera footages. Now, in order to automatically count the operations, uh, I developed a robust computer vision framework. Let's take a look at uh, the framework of the computer vision system. Uh, as for the computer vision part of the system, there are four main modules. First of all, uh, we need uh, an object detection network to detect the aircraft uh, in video footage during the flight uh, operation time window that we have from the cameras. And once any aircraft is detected, the computer needs to verify if the aircraft is in an operation or not, and if yes, what is the status of the flight, departure or arrival? As for the recognition, uh, we first extract the aircraft tail number image with a, uh, with a scene text detection module and later identify the aircraft by recognizing its tail number via sequence recognition networks. Here is a the simplified flowchart of the implemented algorithms uh, in our video-based operating uh, operation monitoring. As you can see, in order to increase, as you can see in, the, in this uh, flowchart, in order to increase the accuracy of the system, a multi-frame-based operation detection is implemented. The expert system uh, feed the video frames to the detection modules and will start tracking aircraft only when a minimum confidence is achieved by the intelligence system. And once the aircraft exists the camera field of view, this system starts processing the extracted information to detect any information possible from the operation and later process with the continuing uh, its monitoring job. Let's take a look at the video demos for each one of these layouts uh, to better understand the output of the system. Here in this slide, uh, I have video demos, uh, or better to say process video footages for uh, camera layout one. On the left, uh, we have this camera, which is north end of the uh, Bountiful Airport in the state of Utah. And on the right, we have the field of view of the cameras, which, which are deployed on the south end of the airport. Let me play this video. So once the aircraft is detected, 
uh, edge preserving algorithms are applied on the image box of the aircraft to retrieve the pixel information that are lost due to the long range of view that we have in this uh, camera layout. And the blurriness, which is caused by the aircraft speed. And after that, the tail number region detector uh, and optical character recognition algorithms are triggered. Finally, uh, at the end of each operation, a probabilistic analysis finalizes the identification and displays the aircraft information, as you can see here, which is extracted from uh, FAA database after recognizing the aircraft tail number. The numbers uh, on the table on the top right here uh, shows the speed of the algorithms using a con uh, conventional computer with CPU-only processing platform, which can be accelerated using GPU or graphical processing units for a real-time surveillance. Let me show you a field of view or process videos, uh, videos of the camera layout too as well. So this uh, window is showing the field of view of this specific camera, which is oriented toward the end entrance taxi bay at the north end of the uh, Bountiful Airport. And this video is for the south end of the same airport. This layout uh, helps us recognize the landing operations, as you can see in here, uh, besides the taxiing aircraft. In this way, uh, the number of the touch and go operations will be the number of the landings minus the number of arrivals, uh, which is which are captured mostly in the middle uh, connectors here, as you can see on the bottom uh, of the screen on the 2D view of the airport diagram. And to distinguish these activities, I used uh, by these activities, I mean landing operations and taxing uh, operations, taxing aircraft. I used camera calibration techniques and classification method based on the aircraft speed and acceleration. You would have the same output uh, which are extracted from the FAA database and using the recognition results of the text recognition on app, which are applied on the aircraft image. Okay, in this slide I listed a few of the implemented algorithms. I used motion detection as the first trigger to reduce the uh, system computational intensity and deep learning uh, based detectors to increase the accuracy of the system. For tracking uh, image, uh, correlation based trackers uh, are tested and for uh, tail number detection and recognition, uh, I use deep learning based uh, syntax detections, uh, detection detectors and sequence recognition networks. I use deep learning methods uh, because the shape of the uh, tail numbers uh, in which are imprinted on general aviation aircraft are typically are not easy to identify compared to the uh, larger aircrafts like airliners. The details of the algorithms are out of the scope of the today's presentation. I will only explain why we need uh, super resolution and joint probabilistic algorithms. After that, I will talk about the data collection procedures. Okay, let's start with the super resolution, uh, one of our algorithms, uh, which is implemented uh, since in camera layout one, landing operations cause blurriness, blurry effect in the captured video frames. Let me show you how it looks like, how the image of an aircraft looks like. 
uh, you can see here on the uh, left how the image of an aircraft in a, one of the video frames looks like when the aircraft is landing because of the aircraft speed. And using super resolution algorithms and bilateral filter, uh, you can see how sharp the image uh, looks like after implementing these algorithms. This sharpness can help us with uh, the task of tail number region detection and subsequently the number uh, recognition tasks. This is done using non-linear edge preserving algorithms. I would suffice to say that this filter replaces the intensity of uh, each pixel with a weighted average of uh, intensity values from nearby pixels using a Gaussian distribution. And super resolution finally uh, retrieve the image information. By retrieving the image information, I mean that in this, in the first image, it's really difficult to read the aircraft tail numbers uh, even with human eyes. But uh, however, after applying the algorithms, you can see uh, that it's much more clear to read the tail number. Okay, the second algorithm that I wanted to discuss was joint probabilistic analysis. But let's uh, first know why we need this joint probabilistic analysis. Uh, and after that, I will discuss the detailed, uh, details regarding the algorithm. As we know, video data is a stack of consecutive images taken by camera. So, each operation footage, uh, which takes about, let's say, 5 to 10 seconds uh, approximately, contains between 150 to 300 video frames. And each frame has an assigned detected tail number, because at each one of the video frames, we apply our machine vision system, and it does all of the recognitions. Also, due to the noise and blurry effects, not every single frame have the same uh, recognition results. Sometimes D is detected as uh, zero and uh, so many other examples. Also because of the occlusion, we might have some hidden and unread characters in the tail number at some frames. Uh, all in all, the raw detection of the tail numbers lead to several tail number recognitions uh, for each one of the operations. As a result, we need a joint probabilistic analysis at each operation uh, to find the most probable detection uh, among all those 150 to 300 detections in the video frames. And to be able to integrate the whole system with the FAA database, we also need this joint probabilistic analysis. So let's see what solutions I use for a joint probabilistic analysis and how each one of them works. <clears throat> let's start with the first solution. The first joint probabilistic analysis uh, or uh, G, uh, JPA number one is a method that works based on maximum likelihood estimation. In this example, uh, the JPA uh, solution one, uh, after seeing all of these recognitions, after processing uh, all of the video frames, this solution, JPA, JPA one, would choose the right tail number. Because as you see, two of the recognitions uh, are actually the exact uh, tail number, which is N287SC. But what if none of the recognition results uh, were the actual tail number? For instance, one of the letters was misrecognized. I developed the JPA number two or JPA solution two for these kind of cases, and also to reduce the ident uh, unidentification uh, cases as much as possible. So based on the solution number one, we first sort all of the uh, all of our recognitions results and then remove those 
that the ICA or normative, ICA normative is basically a grammar check for aircraft tail numbers. And after that, we will remove uh, those that the ICAO or normative rejects. And in the next filter, we'll remove those that are not in our registration database. However, as I said, what if uh, none of the recognitions are in the database? Uh, this would be a complex problem. I will show you how it can be solved with an example. So here I, I want to discuss the JPA solution too. To ex uh, explain how it works, we should know that each recognition, uh, by recognition I mean recognition of the characters uh, in an image, is not an absolute uh, deterministic recognition, but actually a representation of a probability distribution. For example, for this recognition, each letter has a probability distribution uh, and is detected with 68% confidence and so on. So the first letter could also be uh, the letter M with 18% uh, confidence and so on. I used uh, these confidences after applying the uh, detection networks. Uh, or better to say, uh, these probabilities jointly with the FAA registration database to solve the maximum likelihood equations uh, that you see on the left, which gives the finalized recognition. This is done only when the first solution does not uh, find any tail number from the database. The results have shown that uh, this approach, JPA uh, number two, is effective especially for uh, challenging ca uh, cases where uh, tail numbers are difficult to read. So the remaining question would be, is there any other way to increase the uh, reliability of this camera-based system? And the answer is uh, yes. Let me show you how. There is a very interesting part uh, in the developed software that I'd like to share with you. Uh, so I said that we use optical character recognition results and match it with the FAA database to extract the detailed aircraft info. Just for your information, there are about 300,000 uh, registered aircraft in the United States. As a result, a lot of uh, similar uh, registered uh, tail numbers. Uh, there are uh, a lot of similar tail numbers in this database. For that reason, I worked on a aircraft type or model recognition system prior to tail number identification. Uh, with the information of this uh, type or model recognition, we can disregard the irrelevant tail numbers and filter or simply reduce the size of the uh, FAA database, FAA registration database. So how we filter the FAA database, we use every single information that we can uh, get from the recognized uh, uh, aircraft type or model. The most visually perceivable uh, information here on the left, you can see the information that we have from the FAA database. These are the data fields uh, that are provided with the archive uh, files of the FAA registration database. And the most uh, visually perceivable information that are documented in every aircraft registration in the FAA database are aircraft type, uh, engine type, number of engine, and uh, aircraft weight class. These features can be used to build a machine learning model and recognize the aircraft type and model using uh, its image. So how we recognize the aircraft type and model using its image? The answer is deep learning. Uh, which is out of the scope of today's presentation, I just suffice to say that 
it requires deep knowledge in artificial intelligence and deep neural networks. So the input of this system would be uh, the aircraft image and the output would be the aircraft type or model. For example, in this case, uh, after recognizing the aircraft type and model, the system will only search through fixed wing, single, uh, single piston aircraft that are in uh, weight class number one. Or uh, in this case, the system will only search uh, search between the fixed wing trijet aircraft that are in uh, aircraft weight class number three in the FAA database. Okay, enough of technical details uh, to test this proposed computer vision system. Uh, I visited five airports uh, in Utah in several sessions. Those airports are Bountiful Airport, Brigham City Airport, Spanish Fork, Heber Valley, and Logan Cache Airports. And uh, after visiting them, I collected the necessary video footage, which contains different weather conditions, including snowy, cloudy and sunny and different airport layouts with centralized and decentralized hangar areas and uh, each one of them had different uh, aircraft models in their operation and, uh, and their mixed information and in different time of the day i collected the data each one of the five test location airports had their own challenges for example Sky Park Airport, as you can see on the right side of the screen, top right, had a nearby traffic in the field of view of the camera and more touch and go activities. Or Logan Cash Airport here on the top uh, is a multiple runway. And a Spanish Fork uh, had a mixed traffic of jets and proper, uh, propeller aircraft. And Heber has a more uh, heavyweight uh, jet aircraft traffic. Home actually had a more light, uh, lightweight aircraft operation. During uh, 29 data collection sessions, I used three camera types and tested them uh, since each one of them offers different video and image configuration. In these data collection sessions, I used a camcorder a GoPro Hero number eight and uh, Fujifilm XT30 to record the footage with different video resolutions. And considering the distances imposed by runway safety area, uh, the HD resolution with about 30 frames per second is used. Let me show you why we actually need that number of uh, video frames. For example, in the case of this aircraft, as you see, we need the 30 number of uh, 30 frames per second to be able to capture the aircraft tail number. It was very difficult to even detect the aircraft tail number by human eyes. That's why we need uh, that much number of video frames. During each uh, data collection session, we check the air traffic using both a radio and visual observation. Uh, now let's review the performance of the uh, system, which I calculated after testing it on the collected data. In this diagram, we have the accuracies of the different software modules. The accuracies for camera layout one are in green, and uh, the blue color shows the accuracies for camera layout two. During the data collection uh, sessions, both layouts almost perfectly covered the airport operations. Here, uh, the first row showed the uh, accuracy of the camera placement, which shows that more than 99% of the operations are actually captured by the, uh, the cameras. And these operations were seen uh, in the field of view of our cameras. 
the software also sh uh, was able to process the recorded videos and count the number of operations with an accuracy of more than 96 percent here on the second row you can see the accuracy of the operation counts and regarding the tail number identification uh, using uh, JPA or Joint Probabilistic Analysis Solution 1 uh, that we applied on cameras in Layout 2. As expected, uh, cameras in the Layout 2 had a higher accuracy with the accuracy of uh, 80%, and Layout 1 accuracy was about 64%. Uh, as the table illustrates on the bottom, Based on the videos, only 5% of the errors uh, in camera layout 2 is associated with the software error. And the remaining errors are due to the visibility of the tail numbers, like their size, and sometimes they are cluttered. These tail numbers are cluttered uh, or unclear. And at about 6% of the uh, collected cases, uh, the, these aircraft did not have uh, an imprinted tail number. And layout one is different uh, because of the longer range of view. So the percentage of the uh, not visible tail numbers are also more. So as uh, the above diagram shows, JPA solution two increases uh, the accuracy of uh, tail number recognition from 64 to 74. As the number says, uh, camera layout 2, uh, which has a closer range of view, is a better solution for tail number recognition and uh, eventually aircraft identification. In theory, there could be two main limitations uh, in the presented system. Uh, concerns regarding not OCR friendly tail numbers and nighttime operations. For that, I prepared a report uh, for U, uh, U. Aeronautic Division with a complete discussion regarding the list of recommendations for OCR friendly tail numbers to help them with the future manufacturing uh, of these aircrafts and their tail number. And uh, typically, the easier to read the tail number by human eyes, the OCR friendlier uh, the tail number is. About the nighttime operations, I collected, personally, I collected three nighttime uh, data collection sessions, and only one operation took place. Uh, the Spanish Fork Airport Runway lighting was helpful to capture the operation, but these operations are not significant. And it is also reported in uh, ACRP report uh, number 129, which is a report for evaluating methods for uh, aircraft operation counts, uh, aircraft, uh, aircraft operation counts methods at non-towered airports. This report shows that the nighttime aircraft activities in airports without lighting is much less uh, compared to the daytime operations. Uh, which actually, this fact mitigates the low visibility issue if no lighting facilities existed in the airport, in the target airport. Okay, let me uh, talk about briefly about uh, how we implement this system. For implementation, first, a careful consideration is needed to select the best layout. Generally, um, each camera layout has its own advantages considering factors like the number of cameras and accuracy of the identification. However, uh, different camera layouts uh, and airport layouts is also another factor that should be taken into account when choosing the right layout, the right, uh, the right camera layouts. For example, in Bountiful Airport, there are, uh, you can see the, uh, you can see the uh, diagram of the, the Bountiful Airport here. There are a large number of uh, connectors or entrance taxiways with decentralized 
uh, hangar areas. And the runway and taxiway are actually arranged uh, very narrowly, and the runway is very short. So for these specific airports, uh, with these specifications, camera layout one is recommended. So, so is it the uh, Hever Valley Airport, which has uh, several uh, entrance taxiways with decentralized uh, hangar areas. As an example, for camera layout two, I mean a conducive airport layout. For camera layout two, Brigham Municipal Airport uh, and Logan Cash Airport with uh, decentralized hangars uh, are actually uh, very conducive for this specific uh, camera layout. For example, for Brigham uh, City Municipal Airport, we only need to cover these uh, two entrance taxiways to be able to cover the whole uh, aircraft operations at this airport. Same for the Logan Cache Airport. Uh, the camera specs and the required video data quality and how to set the camera lenses at uh, uh, each location is also different in two layouts. In the next uh, slide, uh, I will discuss the required hardware and the specifications of the cameras for implementing the system. So, a solar-powered camera is suggested for a sustainable recording system. And basically, we first record the videos and transfer them to the computer center for processing. As for the camera layout one, a two or uh, three times digital zoom should be set uh, based on the uh, distance of the camera on the runway, set, uh, runway center line. And depending on the distance of the runway uh, with a resolution of HD or higher uh, would suffice for this uh, system. Since in uh, camera layout one, the recorded video targets the runway and fast moving aircraft. At least 24 to 30 frames per second is required. However, in camera layout two, that we have the field of view here in this screen, uh, even 10 frames per second would suffice, uh, which can reduce the processing time as well. And for uh, transmitting or transferring the recorded videos to the computer center, a mobile internet or uh, Wi-Fi uh, should be used. Let's take a look at the associated costs. Here in this table, uh, I listed the necessary elements to uh, evaluate the total cost of the system. The cost of the system varies based on changes, based on the required number of cameras. And if the airport has Wi-Fi infrastructure or a cellular option should be used. And also the power. If a solar panel is required the, uh, to power the cameras. For a two camera system uh, at each end of the airport, the cost uh, would total about $12,000 for an eight, uh, eight month uh, period for the uh, installation and operation. Based on the ACR report uh, 129 for counting uh, non-towered uh, non airport operations, a period of about two weeks is suggested for each season uh, to sample the required operations counts to be able to extrapolate and uh, actually measure the annual operation of that airport. Lastly, uh, I would like to talk about a spin-off benefit of the project and the developed uh, system. One spin-off benefit of the developed algorithms is that we can adjust them to also automate the aircraft tallying or aircraft counting for the STC method or security trail camera, uh, which are another method for aircraft counting. In this method, I mean STC, 
uh, security threat cameras take photos when any motion is sensed and later the images are manually uh, processed to see if the images contain an aircraft or something else, such as uh, wildlife or airport service vehicles. The algorithms uh, can be adjusted to help the automation of this process, so it will be laborless and, uh, of course, faster if we use the image-based system, the automated image-based system. And in a nutshell, you give the folder containing as many as image you want, and the software that we developed can count how many of them include aircraft, and if the tail number is visible, the software can also detect and read the tail number as well. This task is usually done manually and takes a few days and even weeks, but with this software, it takes a few hours or even less. As the final word, uh, I would like to introduce the future research line, which is edge computing by developing a standalone device for counting and recognizing aircraft operations at uh, non-towered airports. The potential extension uh, to this project could be uh, prototyping the developed systems and algorithms and converting the framework into an, a standalone device deployable at airports. With this, uh, with uh, applying edge computing, the processing will be moved to the edge. Uh, by edge, I mean uh, the place, the location that cameras are located. Uh, which decreases the information uh, delay and no, there would be no need for transferring the data. Development of uh, such an standalone device requires a single, uh, single board computer as the main processor and electronic engineering software adjustment and of course an industry mentor to conduct the pilot experiments. I would like to thank uh, Mountain Plains Consortium and Utah Department of Transportation for supporting this great project. Also, I would like to thank the airport authorities for letting me collect the necessary data and the student team members for helping me with the data collection. And thank you all for your time and attention. Now I'm open to your questions. Thank you, Mohammed. If you do have any questions or you want clarification on anything he presented, please go ahead and either put it in the chat or unmute yourself and ask the question. Personally, I'm not one who was real familiar with um, you know, this type of technology. And I always kind of wondered with the non-towered airports how they did that. So it was kind of it's really interesting to uh, I guess to learn this. So thank you for sharing this and Good luck with the rest of your research and and going moving this forward. Sam sure. seems pretty pretty interesting technology. Thank you for the kind words. Any question? I don't see any coming in. So okay. uh, with that, I would like to also extend a. A sense of gratitude to everybody for attending today's TLN event and, of course, to the MPC for um, allowing research like this to happen and the partnering that we get from, uh, from the MPC University. So thank you for that. We certainly appreciate everyone's time, participation, and attention. Uh, thank you again for sharing these, uh, your research findings and, and everything that's going on out in the field. We certainly appreciate that. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed and engaged some new knowledge from today's session, and I encourage you to visit our website at translearning.org. That being said, have a fantastic rest of your week. Be safe and don't forget to be awesome. Take care, everybody. Thanks, Mohammed. Thank you. Thanks, Nicola.